In the video on limits of finite automata, we've seen that finite automata cannot count. There's always an upper bound. At some point, an automaton cannot distinguish whether it has seen n or n plus 1 inputs of some kind. And this idea leads to uh, the so-called pumping lemma. The pumping lemma is a property that all regular languages have. And using this property, we will be able to prove that certain languages cannot be regular because they do not have this pumping property. So the main use of this pumping lemma is to prove that a language is not regular. We cannot prove that a language is regular. This we can easily do by giving an uh, automaton or regular expression for it. In the example with the coffee dispenser, we have seen that if we have more coins than the um, automaton has states, then there was a problem. Then there need to be a loop in the automaton. And now we have a look at the same idea, more abstract case. Assume we have an automaton like this with six states. At first it uh, takes two A's, then a number of B's, that must be a multiple of three, and then at least one A to go to the final state. Now we have a look at what happens when this automaton accepts a word that has at least as many letters uh, as the automaton has states. So we look at this word here and construct the run for this word. So of course we start in the uh, initial state, then we take the a to q1, we take another a to q2, then we enter uh, the loop, we go to uh, q3 to q4, and then we encounter the state q2 again. So q2 is a state that occurs twice so far in our run for, for the word, now accepting run. And after that, we go to the accepting state qf. Now let's analyze the situation more carefully, in more detail. Every time we consume a character from the input, we add another state to the run. So after reading p characters, we already have a run that has p plus one states. If the run has p plus one states, but the automaton only has p states, then there must be one state twice in the run. Because the run now has simply more states than the automaton. So there must, one, uh, there must be one state that occurs twice. So in this case, the run must have this form here. There must be a first part leading to the first occurrence of the state that occurs twice. Then there is a part in the middle from the state that occurs twice back to itself. And then from the uh, state occurring twice, in this case q2, to the accepting state. So actually we can divide the input word into three parts. Let's call the first part u, and this should be the part that leads from the initial state to the state, in this case q2, the state which occurs twice in our, in our run. The second part is uh, a part called v, let's call it v, and this part is the cycle between the two occurrences of q2. And the third part, w, that takes us from the state occurring twice, q2 in this case, to the accepting state. We also know that already after p characters, the run must contain a state twice, because after p characters there are p plus one uh, states in the run, so there must be a state twice. So we know that the cycle must be complete after at most p characters. And that's why we can deduce that the lengths of the first two parts, u and v, must be less or equal to p. But if there is a cycle, we can simply skip the cycle. Not going through the cycle would lead to this run here, resulting in an accepting run for the word u, v to the power of zero, w, so taking out v, so we just end up with two a's and this run is still accepting. So we can just skip the loop and still stay in the language. 
Alternatively, of course, we can go through the cycle twice or more times, three times, four times, if uh, we would like to, thereby accepting a word of the form u v to the power of 2 w. So having more b's inside, in our case, just going through the, uh, through the loop more than once. And this leads us to the formal statement of the lemma and the formal proof. The pumping lemma says that if we have a regular language L, then there must be a constant P, which was the number of states, uh, such that every word Z that's in the language, so that is accepted by the automaton, and has more characters than the automaton, the accepting automaton, has states, meaning that the length of Z must be greater or equal than P, then this word can be divided into three parts, u, v, w, such that v is not empty, because it's the cycle, the cycle cannot be empty, and the length of u, v, the first two parts, must be less or equal than p, and we can actually pump up and pump down, so that for all i in the natural numbers, including zero, so we can remove the v, um, the word u v to the power of i w must be in the language. So we can go through the loop arbitrarily often. And for the proof, we simply generalize the idea we have seen in the example. We assume that L is regular. And if L is regular, then there must be a finite automaton A accepting the language L. Of course, this automaton A has a finite number of states, and this finite number of states will be called P. Now we take a word Z from the language. As the word is in the language, there must be an accepting run leading from the initial state to the final state. In this case, it doesn't matter whether it's deterministic, if there's only one final state, one initial state, doesn't matter. However, if the length of Z is greater or equal than P, then we know that after at most P characters, there must be a state occurring twice in this run, because for p characters, there are already p plus 1 states in the run, and the automaton has only p states, so they cannot all be different. Therefore, we can divide z into three parts, u, v, w, the first u part leading to the state qx, the part v leading from qx to the second occurrence of qx, and the last part w leading from the second occurrence of qx to the final state, to the accepting state qf. And we know since qx occurs twice, there must be a real word, which is not the empty word, between qx and qx, because otherwise it would not occur twice in the run. So we know that the length of v is greater or equal to 1. That's the first condition here. We also know that after at most p characters, the occurrence of qx must, must be there twice. So we know that the length of uv, the first part, must be less or equal to p. And that's the second requirement. So we can conclude that there must be a cycle V in the automaton that then can be used arbitrarily often. And if there's a cycle in the automaton, this cycle can be used arbitrarily often. And thereby we can accept all the words U, V to the power of I, W, because v to the power of i just means how often we go through the cycle. If it's zero, it means we skip the cycle. If it's two, it means we go through the cycle twice, and so on. And there, therefore, we have an accepting run for all these words, and so all these words must be in the language L, because they have an accepting run. And that completes the proof.